If you're in the market for a straightforward, simple to use, and relatively affordable wireless mic, there are suddenly a ton of choices on the market. Just in the last year, it seems like every company out there has released a wireless mic kit. But not all of them are this tiny. This is the Lark M2 from Hollyland, and we're gonna test it out to see if it's a good choice for content creators who don't wanna spend more than $200 on a microphone kit. Before we dive in, I want to mention that Hollyland did not send me the Lark M2, I purchased it myself. I actually saw the combo kit on Amazon with a discount, so I picked it up because I've been interested in checking it out. I do have an Amazon affiliate link in the description for you if you're interested in picking up the Lark M2 and you'd like to support this channel. All right, so let's get started. We've got a lot to cover, even though the Lark M2 is a pretty simple and straightforward wireless mic kit. These are just open the case, connect a receiver, and hit record type mics. And that's not a bad thing at all. I'm just saying this kit is not in the same market segment as the more full featured kits like the Rode Wireless Pro, the DJI Mic 2, or Hollyland's own Lark Max. And the Lark M2 is much more affordable than those kits as well. The audio you're hearing right now is the Lark M2 running into the camera receiver, which is connected to my Panasonic Lumix S5 II over the 3.5 millimeter output. The camera receiver is set to the second, two out of three in terms of the level. I won't be doing any post-processing to the audio in this video other than normalizing the level to minus 16 LUFS, and I will use a limiter to make sure there isn't any clipping, but there won't be any EQ or compression or other processing applied. Let's start by talking about what you get with the Lark M2, depending on which kit you buy. I have the combo kit here, which comes with multiple receivers and everything you need to use the Lark M2 with any camera, smartphone, tablet, or computer. In the box is two transmitters, three types of receivers, the charging case, the 3.5 millimeter cable, a USB cable, wind muffs, magnets and magnetic clips, lanyards, and some stickers that you can use to cover the Hollyland logo on the transmitters, and I personally appreciate that. But there are also kit versions with just one of the receivers. You can get the mics with just the mini USB-C receiver, just the mini lightning receiver, or just the camera receiver. You can occasionally snag a discount on Amazon like I did, so keep an eye out for that. All right, let's talk about compatibility of the different kit options. The camera receiver has a 3.5 millimeter output, of course, for your camera, but it also has a USB-C output. So you can use that receiver with computers, smartphones and tablets, just like the mini USB-C receiver. It's not as tiny and you do have to use a cable to connect it to one of those devices, but it is more versatile technically than the mini receivers because it has both outputs. It's also the only receiver to have a level adjustment on it. It's very basic. You just turn the dial to adjust the output level up or down with three different levels to choose from. With the mini receivers, you have to use the software to adjust the input level. You can do that in a couple different ways, either with the Lark Sound mobile app, which will directly control the level of your mic, or if your recording app has a setting for mic level that you can control. By the way, the Lark Sound app also allows you to update the firmware wirelessly, which is pretty cool. Now there's one other feature that is exclusive to the camera receiver, and that is two channel stereo recording. The mini receivers will connect to both of the transmitters in the kit at the same time, but the signal is gonna be merged into a mono output. So if you plan to record two people with the mics and you wanna be able to edit the audio from each person separately in post, only the camera receiver is capable of doing that. And unfortunately, it gets even more limited than that. The camera receiver can only do two channel stereo output over the 3.5 millimeter connection, not the USB connection. You just have no option to do that with any of the receivers connected over USB. If you are using the 3.5 millimeter output, you can change modes by pressing the button with the M next to it on the receiver and the lights for the output level will turn green for the stereo output. Now, regardless of which receiver you use, the signal is 24-bit depth with 48 kilohertz sample rate. Whether you actually record 24-bit audio is going to be determined by the device that you connect the receiver to and your recording settings, but your audio quality won't be limited by the Lark M2. As for the other specs, the transmitter mics have an omnidirectional polar pattern and a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a signal-to-noise ratio of greater than 70 dB, according to Hollyland, a max SPL of 115 dB, and a sensitivity of minus 37 dBV, which just means they have an average sensitivity for a condenser microphone. Let's talk about a few more features and specs and put these to use in a few different situations. All right, here's a quick sample of the Lark M2 in a kind of a vlogging style setup running into my iPhone 15 Pro Max. I have the mini USB receiver connected 
or straight to the iPhone, no extra rigging, just on a magnetic mount. I do have an ND filter on because it is very bright today, but we are going out to the street so that we can test the noise reduction and see how much that actually works. All right, this is the sound at this intersection with noise reduction turned off. And now this is the sound at this very busy, noisy intersection with noise reduction turned on. This is really loud. I'm very close to the traffic, so I don't expect this to do a fantastic job, but we'll see how good of a job it can do in this kind of extreme scenario. Hopefully you won't have to try and record in an environment like this. All right, and now noise reduction is turned back off. All right, now we're using the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 for a sample of the Lark M2. I have the mini USB-C receiver plugged straight into the back of the battery grip. Now, if maybe you're looking for a two mic kit for your Pocket 3, but the DJI Mic 2 is a little bit more than you wanna spend, I thought this would be a good test to see if the Lark M2 is a good additional option for you. I have it sitting on a tripod right now. We're gonna walk around with it in just a second. But before we do that, I just wanna point out one of the big complaints I have heard other reviewers make or seen in other articles about the Lark M2 is about the windscreen here, or the wind muff. And it's that once you put it on, it does cover up the entire transmitter, then you can't see which side is facing up. And that's kind of an important thing, right? You need to see where the microphone is pointed because you want it pointing up. Well, actually, I think anybody who's made that comment has missed a small but important detail. And that's that when you remove the magnet from the back of the Lark M2 transmitter, there's a little arrow pointing up towards the microphone. So all you have to do after you put the wind muff on is remove the magnet from the back and look at which way the arrow is pointing and make sure you get that facing up. So to me, not a big deal. Could it be better? Sure it could, because you still can't see the button to switch on or off your noise reduction mode, but you definitely can tell which direction the microphone is facing if you just take that magnet off and look for the arrow. All right, now we're taking the Pocket 3 for a walk here. I don't expect anything less than great uh, vlog performance from the Pocket 3 because it, it's a fantastic vlog camera, but the microphone, that's a question mark, right? Because if you don't have the DJI Mic 2, what microphone is easy to use with the Pocket 3 that doesn't require a bunch of wires and things hanging off of it that still allow you to handhold it? Well, the Lark M2 with its mini USB-C receiver could be an answer for you because even though I am handholding this and I do have the battery grip installed, it's still pretty easy for me to do this. It is not awkward in the least. And in fact, this is, this is really not in my way at all. I do have the battery grip on, as I mentioned. So if you don't have the battery grip or if you're not using it, the mini USB-C receiver would be sticking off the bottom, which would make it a little bit harder to hold on to. And now just for comparison, this is a sample of the DJI Mic 2. And of course I have the wind muff installed here. The big advantage with the DJI Mic 2, well, there's actually two big advantages. One of them is that for the Pocket 3 or actually the Action 4, if you have the DJI Action 4, you can connect directly to the camera via a Bluetooth connection and get audio directly in there without having to plug in or connect anything. A second advantage is you have 32-bit internal recording in the transmitter. So if you ever do have a dropout or interference, then you're still gonna have the backup recording. By the way, I do not have the low cut filter turned on on the mic too. This is just the raw sound of the built-in mic. Let me know down in the comments, which did you like better, the sound of the Lark M2 or the DJI Mic 2? All right, now we're gonna do our range test with the Lark M2, and this is recording into my iPhone 15 Pro Max. Okay, now we're at 25 meters away from the camera, and as you can tell, this is already pretty darn far away from the camera. I don't really see a reason why I would ever need to film further than 25 meters away from my camera because I shoot everything by myself and I don't want someone to walk away with my camera, but I would expect not to have any issues whatsoever. I'm in a field, complete open, clear line of sight here. So I wouldn't expect to have issues here. The Lark M2, according to Hollyland, works up to a thousand feet or 300 meters. So we're certainly not testing that limit here. This is just 25 meters. And now we're at 50 meters away from the camera. And with this field of view on the iPhone, I have a feeling you probably can barely see me anymore at this point, but this is 50 meters, making sure, I'm gonna turn around here, and see if my the transmitter and the receiver at 50 meters. So this was the 50 meter test. Now I'm facing the camera again. This is the distance where I have run into issues with other wireless mic kits, even though they rate themselves as working well beyond 100 meters. This is also a distance where I don't really see the need for most content creators to be working at this distance to their camera. So this is as far as I'm going to be testing it. We'll see how strong the signal was at 100 meters. 
All right, now before we talk about my overall impressions of the Lark M2, let's do a comparison to some other wireless mics and we'll talk about two features that the Lark M2 doesn't have. In front of me, we've got transmitters for the Lark M2, the Rode Wireless Go 2, the Rode Wireless Pro, the DJI Mic 2, the Hollyland Lark Max, and the Cinco G2 Pro. I'll put the prices of all these up on the screen so you can see the price range that we're working with here. I'm recording all of these at the same time by using the internal recording that most of these have. The wireless recording for the Lark M2 is still going into my Panasonic Lumix S5 II, and then the Cinco G2 Pro also does not have internal recording, so that one is going wirelessly to the receiver Plugged into my MacBook, I'm recording that one into Audacity. All of the others here have internal recording, so we're gonna be using the internal recording from the transmitter. So really, this is not a comparison of wireless performance. This is just so you can hear the sound of all of these different wireless mics while we're talking. So as I mentioned, out of all of these, only the Cinco G2 Pro and the Lark M2 do not have internal recording in the transmitters. All of the others have that internal recording, so you always have that as a backup if your signal drops out or if you have interference with that wireless transmission. Now the DJI Mic 2 and the Rode Wireless Pro both have 32-bit internal recording, which means not only do you have your audio backup, but you also don't have to worry about clipping due to any sound that gets too loud, as long as it's not so loud that it exceeds the max SPL of the microphone, which would be pretty rare. The Wireless Go 2 and the Lark Max also have internal recording, but it's 24-bit internal recording. So is this feature really important? Well, it kind of depends on how you're using your wireless mics and the type of content that you create. If you don't regularly record in areas that have a lot of 2.4 gigahertz air traffic, then you're less likely to run into interference and spotty signals. The worst case scenario for mic kits like this would be like a convention floor where there's a ton of Wi-Fi signals around, lots of media using 2.4 gigahertz microphones. That environment is just asking for drop signals and interference. But even recording in places like airports or busy tourist spots, where there's a lot of Wi-Fi around, even that can cause issues. The second consideration is the nature of your content. Regardless of any of that interference or dropout issue, if you regularly record scripted or planned content that you can repeat easily, then it's possible to reshoot something if you realize after the fact that your audio dropped out. And if your content is mostly short form content, that's even less of a headache because it's, you know, it's annoying, but it's not the end of the world if you have to reshoot a 30 second video. But if your content tends to be the type of things that are difficult or impossible to reshoot, like one time only interviews or events that are never gonna happen again, then bad audio means your project is scrapped because you can't just do it over again. So if that's the bulk of your content, then internal recording is definitely good insurance to have. Now let's just briefly mention the one other feature that all of these kits have that the Lark M2 does not, a 3.5 millimeter input on the transmitter for a lav mic. This is one of those things I don't think I need to talk about a lot because you most likely know whether you need that or not. Having the option is nice because if you shoot something where you or a guest don't like having a transmitter visible on you, then you can just have them or yourself, you can put it in a pocket with a more discreet lav mic clipped on somewhere instead. However, I do like the sound quality of the Lark M2 transmitter mic, so I don't like have a reason to want a different sound from a different mic. And the one big advantage it has over all of these other kits is that the transmitter is way smaller, so they're nowhere near as obvious, even if you have it stuck right to the front of your shirt with the magnet. So there probably would be fewer cases where you definitely want to go smaller because it's already tiny. All right, so that's it for the comparison. Let me know which one of these you like the sound of best down in the comments. Okay, now for some pros and cons and my overall recommendation. I'll keep this relatively short because we've pretty much already covered who I think these are a good option for. As far as the pros, the size of the transmitters is really nice. I cannot deny that. It's very nice and convenient to have a transmitter this tiny. You don't even notice you're wearing it. It's hard to notice on screen, especially if you have multiple layers of clothing on. It's just great that it's so tiny. Also, the sound quality is surprisingly good for the price point, and I like that they stuck with 24-bit audio and didn't drop it down to 16-bit just to lower the price more. In fact, the quality of everything in the kit is nice, and the battery life is also very good for something this small. I like that they offer different kit options as well, so you don't need to buy parts that you know you won't use. And overall, I think the price point is fair for what you're getting, even if you buy the combo kit and pay the highest price. 
And when it comes to the range, I don't really necessarily want to call that a pro or a con because whether it's exactly what you need or not, it was reliable for me at reasonable distances. Now, as far as some cons here, it really depends on what your needs are and how you're going to be using your wireless mics. You could definitely consider the lack of internal recording or an input for lav mics as a con. But in my opinion, that's not the point of this kit. Now, if you need those features, it's just not for you and that's okay. But that being said, even if this fits your use case, there are still a couple cons to consider here. One small thing that can be kind of frustrating is with the mini receivers here, if you have a case on your phone and you're using it with a smartphone, it's not necessarily going to fit on all cases. It really depends on how thick your case is. For example, this is an iPhone 15 Pro Max with a case from spec. This will pop in. If I really push it, it'll pop in and the lights will turn on but it also pops back out very easily. Like it is really lightly connected there. So any little vibration is going to loosen that to the point where it disconnects. It, with this case, I would have to take the case off my phone to, to really reliably have this plugged in. Now, while that may just be a minor frustration here, the bigger con that I think applies to more people is that you cannot do the two channel stereo recording with the mini receivers over the USB connection or on the camera receiver over the USB connection. It only works with that 3.5 millimeter output. So if you do a lot of recording of two people and you wanna be able to control that audio for each person separately, like, I don't know, editing out somebody sneezing <laughs> while the other person is talking, you can't do that unless you're using the Lark M2 with that 3.5 millimeter output. So that might be a deal breaker for some people and that would be fair. Now I do think the wind muff situation is a little finicky. I'd put this as another minor annoyance in my opinion with the Lark M2. It's a little finicky to get it put on first and then you can't see the noise reduction button or the indicator light, the status light, once it's installed. I don't have the issue with not knowing what way the microphone's pointing as I mentioned earlier because of that little arrow on the back, but it's still not the best overall experience with the wind muff. It's not a deal breaker for me, but it is kind of a usability annoyance. Now, other than those things, I don't see any additional deal breaker type downsides for the price. And I do recommend the Lark M2 if you're in the market for a straightforward and compact wireless mic kit, as long as the limitation for stereo recording isn't a problem for you and you don't have a strong need for that internal recording in the transmitter. So that'll do it for my review of the Lark M2. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. Be sure to let me know which of all of those wireless mics you like the sound of better as far as the built-in mics on the transmitters. Let me know if you picked up the Lark M2 for yourself and how you're liking it. Don't forget to subscribe to the Semi Pro Tech and Gear channel. And while you're here, why don't you check out one of these videos? I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Thanks everybody. See you next time.